Today we have a quick one. It is about export settings in Premiere Pro to upload to Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. One really important step in making a video is exporting it and then sharing it with the world. If you just edit something and never show it to anybody, how is that fun? And in this video I want to talk about how to do that for Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Those platforms are pretty similar and at the same time very different. For YouTube, Premiere Pro actually offers a dedicated export setting. For Instagram, that is not the case and for Facebook as well. Now, the difference between YouTube and Facebook is not that significant. You can pretty much upload the same file to both platforms and be fine with it. But you can keep in mind that it can be very interesting to have a square or a rectangular, like a portrait mode video on Instagram or Facebook as well. Because this kind of fills more screen on both of these platforms which are mostly consumed on mobile devices. On YouTube, however, you want to have the normal standard format like this one. Now I want to talk about the different aspect ratios in tomorrow's video, so today it's more about the export settings and kind of the quality ranking and stuff like that. So there are a couple things you have to keep in mind. On YouTube and Facebook you pretty much have no limits uh, except for the length and the length can be really easily be overwritten because you can actually um, authorize your channel or verify your channel and then you actually have the ability to upload longer videos as well. So this is not a matter. On Instagram however you have have 60 seconds for example where you have to limit the video to that length no matter the aspect ratio. So let's just jump onto the screen and see which settings I tend to use. As you can see here we have the video edit of the offline weekend marketing video and this video is actually 44 seconds and that would be pretty much perfect to also share it on Instagram. However the aspect ratio is obviously not ideal for a mobile share because it is horizontal. It is not taking in too much space on a platform like Instagram or Facebook. If it would be 4x5 in portrait mode for example it would be much better for Instagram. But this was made for YouTube and the web in general so we want to export this and if you don't have any in and out points in the video in other places, I would say just hit uh, Command and M and then you can export it. However, if you have some kind of in and out point, let's say the in and out points are set like this and you want to get rid of them, you can just do Alt and I and Alt and O. So the Alt K, then I and the Alt K and then O. Um, you can just remove the in and out points like that. So now we have the whole video and once I hit Command and M, the export window will open. And as you can see down here, the video will be 45 seconds long and we can scrub through here to kind of check if everything is in there. And it actually goes to the end and that is quite nice. And it starts at the uh, correct position as well. Now what I have is I have a couple of these presets at the top here and those are my custom presets that I made for myself but in general they are not that custom after all. I just take some of these down here and put them up here because that makes it much more easy to access those right here. One thing I did was, for example, I have this YouTube 180p HD and this is my kind of standard export. And what this essentially does, it sets the quality settings to a setting that YouTube already understands very well and most likely will not change that much in terms of the full HD playback. So it has the full HD data in the width and height, the 1920 by 1080p. And then it also has the square pixels, the pro uh, profile in high, the level 4 by 4.2, and the bitrate at VBR one pass. Overall, these settings are pretty standard and just normal for the quality that YouTube offers and you can provide for YouTube. The audio settings are also something that I don't mess with right here. In general, these settings make quite nice uh, exports. You can also change this to use the maximum render quality. However, I have noticed that this will take a lot longer and the quality difference is not that visible uh, to my eye, especially if you want to produce a lot of content, this is something that keeps you from exporting and uh, like makes the exporting just unnecessarily long. However, if you're using tons of effects, tons of layers and also transparency, this is something you want to definitely have uh, on because then the maximum render quality is actually really, really useful. One thing I also do a lot is that I export something at a constant bitrate for just preview purposes because as you can see down here now the file size is 12 megabytes for the whole video in 1080p at a constant bitrate. If I go to my standard YouTube settings at 180p with variable bitrate 
I actually have a file that is 88 megabytes, so the export will also take a lot longer. As I mentioned before, I will actually use the YouTube export that is here or down here to just uh, make the Facebook and the YouTube export because both of these platforms support 1080p and both of these platforms can handle these files quite nicely and also for viewing on a computer, for example, I use these settings as well. Now, if I would want to do a movie theater screening or something, I would probably go for the ProRes stuff, but I never did that, so I don't even have the ProRes uh, presets in the uh, Premiere Pro right now, but this is also an option you can go in and uh, make that. Then, however, you will have a massive file and obviously the quality would be much better, but it's not really necessary for the YouTube uploads and it would just complicate the upload process. Now, if I'm exporting for Instagram, we have a different problem because Instagram actually limits the width and the height of videos. So we actually have to do something different here. For Instagram, however, I will talk about the export settings in tomorrow's video because there I will also talk about this kind of aspect ratio thing and what you can do to make the Instagram version of your edit so much more interesting on that specific platform. Overall, the YouTube settings are really nice to work with. They are already built in and you don't really have to change much. I have heard that the variable bitrate with two pass also is higher quality than the one pass, but then again, it's just something that takes longer and for me, it's not worth struggle. The maximum render quality again is something that I would read something about maybe because uh, in general it uses more re uh, render time and it takes longer to actually produce the exported file. It is higher quality but it's really only uh, visible if you use a lot of effects, color grading, transparency and other stuff for example also after effects uh, layers or something like that. So it's not really that necessary to use that all the time. And I tend to have that checked off, especially for videos that I try to daily upload because then uh, the time is just not there. So I really have to um, kind of make it work without it. Then the last step would be to edit to the queue and then you have it in the media encoder. And the great thing about the media encoder is that you can actually kind of collect exports in here by adding them to the queue and then you hit the play button. For example, for me, I oftentimes do this while I go to sleep and have the MacBook actually export all the video files that I edited over the day. And that way I don't have to really wait for uh, stuff and just can export whenever I'm not at the computer. Another thing that is really important in terms of exporting is to kind of check beforehand if actually everything is visible. If you have everything turned on here with this little eye toggle. And another thing that I also constantly do is that I have the audio effects. And in the audio effects, I have the audio track mixer. And sometimes I use these multiband and some um, compression and uh, limiter uh, or noise cancelling, so stuff like that. And I disable those at the beginning or while editing the video because they make strange noises when I use them, when especially with the L key to kind of playback at higher speeds. So actually going through this stuff and turning stuff on that you have disabled for the time being uh, is something that is really necessary and you will regret it if you actually export your edit without having this setting on because then you will have to export it again and export is something that takes almost the most amount of time, especially since it's time where you cannot really use your computer while doing it. So actually checking if everything is visible here, checking if everything is in order right here and checking if the audio effects are all turned on is something that is really necessary and makes a lot of sense beforehand to not have to worry about it in the aftermath and just have to export it again and again. I had that happen once where I had to export a file three times because I always forgot something. And that is not really something you want to have to make. So one thing I do at the end of an edit is I tend to set the quality to one quality Water, and then I go through the edit by just hitting L twice and then it just goes through the clip uh, entirely at the double the speed basically so I can kind of check if everything is in order and everything should be fine. This works much better on my computer if I actually have 1080p footage because it is a five year old computer that cannot really handle the 2.7k GoPro footage, especially if I don't conform it to other codecs. That's it for exporting. Exporting in terms of the presets is really easy because Adobe already tells you what you can use or what you should use. 
But it's also something where you should be very cautious to kind of check again before or maybe even check before and after you export and between uploading it to the internet. You just don't want to kind of annoy everybody with a wrong file. However, there are a couple tricks you can do in YouTube where you can actually trim the footage, for example, if you export it way too much. That happened to me once where I exported a file that was supposed to be 10 minutes, it was 30 minutes, and that was just because I forgot a little bit of video footage at the end. So it exported about 20 minutes of black screen and then this little footage clip. And I was able to change that in YouTube with the YouTube editor and replace the video itself. However, if you actually forget to add some out, uh, if you actually forget to add some audio, it's something completely different, and you might have to re-upload the whole clip, and that's not fun, especially because for me, uploading and exporting are the two big factors in time consumption where I cannot really work. Uh, that much on the clip or on the project itself. So try to make everything right the first time. It doesn't work every time, especially if you do a lot of content and exporting. You tend, or I tend to forget uh, some settings and maybe hear the audio settings and maybe hear a layer. So it's uh, always a struggle and it's always kind of annoying if something like that happens, but it's nothing you can't fix. Now, please let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions about this exporting or any tips on how I could improve my exporting settings. Also in the description you will find a link to a playlist where I talk a lot about different kinds of video making, video gear, photography gear, my lenses, my camera, all that stuff. So you can check that out as well. If this video was helpful for you, please leave it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this almost every day. I will see you in the next video and until then I hope you have an amazing day and make it your life. Bye.